James Wan and Leigh Whannell are two of my favorite horror filmmakers. Whether that's their original classic film in Saul, or I even like Insidious. Yes, even the sequels. Yes, even The Last Key. But before Insidious was being milked into a franchise, and Saul was in the middle of being milked as a franchise, James Wan and Leigh Whannell tried to create a franchise with killer dolls. No, not that one. I'm talking about... So what is Dead Silenced, I'm assuming you asked? Great question. It is a 2007 horror film written by Leigh Whannell and directed by James Wan. The two were just three years removed from the success that was Saul. And then the two decided to make this, a film that Leigh Whannell has famously said he doesn't like. Which when you hear what went on with the studio, I get it. The film isn't what Leigh Whannell fully wanted it to be. I don't know about you, but knowing that a writer or a director doesn't like a film they made because of the studio, it can affect my enjoyment of a film. But but nevertheless, I still enjoy this movie. Oh yeah, by the way, the film stars Ryan Quinten, Quanten? I'm bad with names, I'm sorry. Donnie Wahlberg and Bob Gunton. So believe it or not, Dead Silence is actually a murder mystery. I mean, it's not really a mystery as to who's doing the killing, it's very clearly the ghost of Mary Shaw. But the story is about Jamie Ashen trying to prove his innocence in the murder of his wife, while Donnie Wahlberg doesn't believe him. One day, Jamie and his wife, who I'm sorry, can't act, get a mysterious doll in their mail, and let's be real, if anyone actually got this delivered to them, they would immediately toss it out the window or just burn it, which is what I would do. But no, Jamie instead props him onto the couch and leaves his wife alone with it. Okay, maybe this guy isn't so innocent. When Jamie is gone, his wife puts Billy in the bed to scare him when he gets home, but instead, she dies in what is actually a pretty good kill scene, I must admit. The tension is built nice, and my god, that face when Jamie pulls the sheet off is absolutely horrifying. So, Jamie is questioned, and then like the reasonable person he is, he violates a crime scene, steals evidence, and then leaves the city. Okay, I'll be honest, I'm rooting for the cop, because this guy sucks at being innocent. Also, the town Jamie is from is called Raven's Fair. That is like the most edgy 2000s name they could have given this town. And when it's revealed, it seems like it's supposed to be a big deal, but the town is hardly shown outside the main street, which is empty, the funeral home, the theater, and Jamie's dad's house. I feel like even for 2007, Raven's Fair was really edgy and trying way too hard, but anyway, it's revealed that Jamie's dad is rich as shit. Like, he lives on this big ass manor and has a wife who was like 30 while he's probably around 60. Then again, old rich dudes marrying women half their age is perfectly normal, you know. It happens. Anyway, Jamie doesn't like his stepmom and then goes to bury his wife. The funeral dude then gives Jamie the backstory of Mary Shaw and why people are scared to mention her name. She was a ventriloquist and during a performance, a kid shouted at her that he could see her lips moving. So reasonably, she kidnapped him, killed him, and then made him into a doll. And surprisingly, the town got mad at that and killed her. But she was mad that the town killed her, so she vowed revenge to the families responsible for her death. Wait, what? Okay, I get the kid was a dick, but she's the one who kidnapped him and turned him into a puppet. Why is her spirit angry? The town was completely justified on what they did. I'm not saying it was right, but the reason for being angry makes a lot more sense than her reason for being angry. She was mad because the town was mad at her for killing a kid. So during all of this exposition, we do actually get a pretty effective scare. We see the funeral dude as a kid and he has an interaction with Mary Shaw's spirit and it's just, ah. Anyway, some time passes and the funeral home dude dies in a pretty effective death scene. That is, unless you're watching the unrated version, in that case the sequence is too long and the CGI tongue ruins it. Why was this added? It adds nothing to the movie, and in fact it takes away from it. So whatever, the funeral guy dies, and then they go to the theater, and I'll be completely honest, this whole end sequence is actually really good. Mary Shaw's spirit is terrifying, and the tension built through her taunting Jamie and Donnie works really well. Oh, we also learn why Mary Shaw killed Jamie's wife, and that's because she was pregnant. See, Mary Shaw is out to kill every member of the families that killed her, so because Jamie's wife was pregnant, so that meant Jamie wasn't the end of his bloodline, which is actually a really brutal revelation. I remember I watched this movie with my sister once, and she nearly cried when this was revealed. Eventually, the dolls start to come alive, so Donnie shoots them, and then Jamie lights them on fire, thus lighting the entire theater on fire, and then we get the creepiest shot in the entire film. Mary Shaw, ominously floating down this hallway, is legitimately one of the scariest things I've ever seen in a movie, period. Anyway, Donnie ends up dying and Jamie falls off the catwalk through the stage 
and then swims out onto the theater, however that works. He then goes back to his dad's, and then we get a twist, which I will save for later, but to be honest, the twist, in a way, saves the movie. So before I get into what I like about this movie, there are a few issues I want to address. The most obvious issue visually is that the color grading is terrible. It's very bad. The film is just bleak to look at. It's visually uninteresting. There's just no life. I kind of understand what they were going for. They wanted a very mute color scheme, but instead we just get this. Plus the editing as well is pretty awful at points. At times it does this weird effect where it speeds up the footage, but it just comes out of nowhere and doesn't add anything to the film. So it's just distracting. Something else that I have an issue with is the length of the film. I think it needs to be longer. There is an unrated version and it maybe adds a few minutes, but it's clear that they wanted the town of Raven's Fair to be something more than it is. I don't know what that was, or maybe I'm just reading it wrong, but to me it feels like Raven's Fair was meant to be more than it was, like maybe almost its own character. But instead, we're not really given a whole lot as to why Raven's Fair is supposed to be this special place. And speaking of the unrated cut, there's some stuff that I honestly wish wasn't in it. The weird CGI tongue thing that Mary Shaw has is just so bad. Like, it's just bad CGI. And whether that's after Harry's death or when Mary is holding up the clown doll, it's unnecessary on pretty much every level, if you ask me. Other than that, it's really not even an unrated cut. Like, there's there's no added language or nudity, and from what I can tell, there's really no added gore besides the tongue. Why is it unrated? There's nothing special about it. Like I said, the only real additions hurt the movie. And the last thing I want to mention is that the performances in this are also not very good. Laura Reagan specifically, who plays Jamie's wife, she's not good, I'm sorry. However, she's not in the movie, so I can't knock it too much. Okay, enough negativity. Despite all the negative things I just said, I really do like this movie and I think a lot of it does work. While Jamie's wife is pretty bad, the performance of Jamie is actually pretty good. He's not outstanding and isn't giving an Oscar worthy performance, but he does what the film needs. And I know I mentioned that Donnie Wahlberg is in it and he is having so much fun. He plays a no-nonsense cop that doesn't believe in ghosts and who doesn't believe Jamie's story. I can't tell if he's taking this role completely serious or he's not taking it serious at all, but it's clear he's having fun. He also had this weird shaving thing throughout the movie, like he just pulls out a razor and shaves for a few seconds every once in a while. I'm telling you, it's great. The funeral guy too, he's pretty decent. His wife plays a crazy, out of her mind lady pretty decently. Everyone else is giving, you know, good enough performances. Besides the humans in this movie though, there's a number of ventriloquist dolls, and as someone who hates dolls and puppets, I find them all creepy, especially the main one, Billy. Yes, he shares a name with the puppet from Saw, but it's fine, don't think about it. I've said it before, but it takes a lot to scare me nowadays, but there's moments in this movie that do legitimately scare me. I didn't mention it earlier, but there's a scene where Jamie is in his motel room with Billy, and he has a dream about Mary Shaw appearing in the room, and it's just, I mean, look at this. Once again, the scene with the young funeral guy and his interaction with Mary Shaw is utterly terrifying as she just floats towards him. The funeral guy's death scene is also pretty good, except if you're watching the unrated version. Also that hallway scene I mentioned earlier. Why is this old woman floating through a dimly lit hallway with the blowing curtains? So scary. I don't know why, but it is. And speaking of Mary Shaw, Yeah, Mary Shaw got her own part. What are you gonna do about it? Mary Shaw in this movie is actually very unsettling. Even when she's alive in the flashback, she's scary to me. And not just because we learned she kidnapped a kid, but like her old frail fingers and her whole look is just unsettling, which I'm sure was done purposefully. Hold on a second, I just realized something. It's mentioned that Harry, Mary Shaw lived in the theater, right? We see her apartment and the doll storage room, and the only way to access it is by climbing up the catwalk and walking across it. Does that mean this frail old lady had to climb up a ladder and across a catwalk to her apartment anytime she wanted to go to it or leave? How did she get up there without breaking a hip? How the hell did she drag a kid up there? What the hell? I never realized this before. That's a pretty wide plot hole I never thought about before. You know what? Whatever. That doesn't take away from Mary Shaw being absolutely terrifying. Plus her whole thing is that if you scream you die and this woman is pretty creepy so it kind of makes sense. But does that mean if you never scream like she wouldn't kill you she would just haunt you? Like would she just continuously try to get you to scream? It's kind of funny to think about her just going to extreme lengths to try to get you to scream. Speaking of Mary Shaw going to extremes to get someone to scream. I 
I mentioned earlier that the film has a twist ending and that the twist saves the film in a way. While I personally like the film before the twist happens, it does add a lot to the film. The twist being that Jamie's dad was actually a doll and his wife was actually a doll that Mary Shaw's spirit was possessing. It's revealed during the ending sequence that Ella was a doll that Mary had made at some point before her death and was possessing the doll as a way to be inconspicuous around the townspeople. One part about this reveal I don't like, however, is the circling camera and flashback trope that was used in Saw. When Jamie realizes the truth, the camera circles him and we see flashbacks explaining what happened. It's just jarring and different from how the film was shot beforehand. I think personally that how we just had a series of flashbacks, it would have been more effective than getting the flashbacks while having the camera circling Jamie. Either way, the twist does overall work and the flashbacks do help with connecting the pieces together. I almost forgot to mention that the theme for this movie is insanely good. In my opinion, this theme rivals Saul in 28 Days Later in terms of how good it is. It's the right amount of creepy and it builds tension perfectly. And the theme makes the twist even better. Much like how the Saw theme helps the ending and twist in Saw so much better, it's kind of sad to me that this theme isn't as recognized as Saw in 28 Days Later. It is probably because this film is just a standalone and not part of a franchise. If you were curious, this was supposed to lead to a franchise, much like Saw and Insidious, but sadly, the film underperformed, so no sequel was ever made, and it's one of the few blemishes on the record of both James Wan and Leigh Whannell. Despite this, I do really like the film. Mary Shaw is truly scary at points, and the twist, while not on the level of Saul, is still really good to me. I know the film has grown quite a cult following over the years, but I still think that more people should give this movie a chance. While not the most original concept, it's done by two proven filmmakers, so the film stands above the majority of the killer doll movies out there. Now before I reveal my score, I just want to say that I know that I've been giving this movie a lot of praise, so my score might seem low. However, when you look at the film as a whole, like including the bad color grading, the weird editing, and just some of the overall really weird choices that were made with this movie, I really can't go any higher than a six and a half out of 10. <laughs> 